Uh, thanks. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. Thanks for the uh, opportunity. Uh, this is all, all joint work with Dave Anderson and Richard Gonzalez. And I guess one of the themes for the week uh, is, is Chow Groups. So let me start from, from Chow Groups, from the motivation. So say x over k is, is some singular variety. So if we have a smooth variety, then the Chow groups have extra structure. There's an intersection product where the value of the product of two transverse cycles is the class of the intersection. And we don't have a story like that on singular varieties because there aren't enough transverse cycles. So this question, which maybe doesn't have a definitive answer, is what is the Chow ring? of x. And so there's a, a long history of, of attempts to, to answer this question or to give candidates for, for this. And so I think the first sort of satisfying and, and compelling candidate uh, was, was given by Fulton in 75. So this is from his appendix to the paper of Baum, uh, with Baum and McPherson on, on Riemann rock for singular varieties. And so what he proposes is that, um, so he only proposes this in the quasi-projective case. So if x is quasi-projective, then take, so I'll call this A star L of x. And, and what he says is, well, if x maps to a smooth variety, then on that smooth variety, I know what, what co-cycles are. And I should be able to pull back co-cycles. And so he says, well, let me take a co-limit then. So this is over all maps from x to y smooth. And then I can take the Chow ring of y. And the reason why I, I say L is so this is left con extension. So So, so this is a universal way of extending the Chow ring from smooth varieties to all varieties. So any other such extension will receive a map from A star L, from, from the left con extension. And so um, the reason for, for the quasi-projective hypothesis, so let me give this as a caution for against taking this as your definition in general, is that so there exist complete variety, so let's say complete threefolds, that have no non-trivial curve classes. And, and so this is a little bit, um, so, and as a consequence, they have no non-trivial maps to smooth varieties, no non-constant maps to smooth varieties. So their left chow rings are trivial. So this is a theory that's going to work well for, for varieties that admit lots of maps to smooth varieties, so in particular for quasi-projective varieties. Okay, so. So you might instead say, well, instead of taking this, so I, I don't know whether I admit maps to smooth varieties, but I certainly have maps from smooth varieties. So maybe it would be better to, to go that way, that if I have a cohomology class, then I can pull it back to any smooth variety that's mapping in, and that should give a compatible collection of cohomology classes. On It's a co-limit. Okay. So if it's smooth, you get back the Chow ring of your variety because there's a terminal object in that. Okay. 
OK, so answer two was, could be, so you could, for instance, you could try to define a right con extension. So you could try to take the limit over y to x, where y is smooth, of the chow ring of y. And the reason why I, I put this in quotes, so it's obviously a, a ring, But I, I think this must be an open problem, whether, whether this is a functor. I'm confused. So when you try to stretch limits, yes. so, I mean, I have x to y1, x to y2, I will map from y1 to y2, and you use compar random comparators for smooth varieties, for, for the child ring, for mm -hmm. smooth varieties. So the, the map goes the other way. So I, I'm confused with the stretch limit. Yes. So, so the pullback from y2 to x factors through y1. Yeah. So its image is contained in the image, and those get identified in the limit. Yeah, but could you take it? It's a co-limit. It's a pullback. It's a pullback. No, it's a, it's a co-limit of rings. Yeah. OK. So here, you can, you can take a limit. And so you're looking at compatible collections of, of cohomology classes on all y mapping into x, where y is smooth. But what's not obvious is whether this is a functor. So if I have some x prime mapping to x, and I have some smooth y mapping to x, that somehow doesn't give me a smooth y prime mapping to x prime. And, and so I think this, this is probably an open problem, whether this is a functor, or whether, whether right con extension exists. OK. so. I hope that's, that's reasonable motivation for, for the definition that, that we typically work with for, for Chow cohomology. And so, so this third answer is um, so due to Fulton and McPherson. So, and so this is the, the operational Chow ring. And here, the motivating idea is that, at the very least, uh, cohomology classes should pull back, and they should act on homology. So, so Chow cohomology should act on, on Chow groups. And so I'll write this as op A star, so for the operational Chow ring. And what an element here is, is a collection of operators. So, so these operators are indexed by maps from y to x, but now y is arbitrary. And, and that's very important. And what CG does is it, it's an uh, endomorphism of the Chow group of y. We don't want any such collection of, of operators. We want them to be uh, compatible with flat pullback, proper push forward. And if you have in mind deformation to the normal cone, then uh, the last thing you require should be clear. It should be compatible with Giesen maps for regular embedding. And so advantages here. So this is clearly a functor. It's not clearly trivial for, for, for these varieties. Uh, it has a product structure, which is given by composition of operators. So it, it has an associative ring structure. Uh, I, should, I should still give, give a caution here, though. So this is an open problem. So, th so the composition of operators is not obviously commutative. So, so it's not clear that this is really the definitive um, chowering. Uh, but it does have some nice properties. So, so um, uh, 
So if x is smooth, then you get back the, the usual tail ring. So, if x is smooth, they agree. And there's a map from left con to this. Yeah, so, so left con is, is left. OK. Um, but this has, has more nice properties that are, that are lurking under the surface. So it, it took more than a, than a decade to, to realize this. So this is a theorem of Shinichi Kimura. And what, what he proved is that if y to x is a proper envelope, then the, the operational cohomology of x injects into the operational cohomology of y. And the image is the kernel of the map to the fiber product. So, so this is a, a descent sequence for, for envelopes. And as a corollary, so, so, so proper means that it's proper. And envelope means that each scheme theoretic point of x is the image of a scheme theoretic point of y, such that the map on the residue fields is an isomorphism. So every subvariety of x is the birational image of a subvariety of y. Y need not be connected. So typically envelopes, when you construct them, so, so such as here, you'll see an example of an envelope. Uh, so, OK. y cross over x, y uh, op. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. If it has rationally connected fibers, I don't know theorems there. So I know if it's an affine bundle, then pullback is an isomorphism. No. Oh, pr uh, proper means it's a proper morphism. Oh, ah, okay. All right. Uh, okay. So if y to x is now, let's say it's proper and birational uh, with exceptional locus E and pi of E is S. So, so then the cohomology of x injects into the cohomology of y plus the cohomology of s. And the image is the kernel of the difference of the two pullbacks to e. So here what we've done is we've taken a proper birational map and we've constructed implicitly an envelope, which is y disjoint union s. So this is exact. And so this should look like an abstract blow up. So this is a, so this is a CDH uh, descent. And so as a corollary, so given resolution of singularities, this operational child cohomology uh, is is the same. So. So is the right so the, now the right con extension does exist. It is a functor. It is um, yeah. and this is the CDH sheafification. Of, so so maybe this is a, a more satisfying answer that if you have resolution of singularities, then operational chow is CDH sheafification of left left con. No. No, okay. no. No, this is not, no. The envelope here is Y disjoint union S. Okay. Yeah. OK. Yes, yes. Yep, yes. Yeah, so that's a good point. So, right. So from now on, 
Uh, okay, so I want to assume resolution of singularities. So characteristic of k is zero, but but everything will be fine and positive characteristic uh, if and when we have resolution of singularities. Uh, let me give a little more motivation for, for why would you choose this operational point of view. So op A star so it is part of a, of a larger structure. So it is part of a bivariant theory. So this, this concept is, is due to Fulton and McPherson. And, and what, this, what this does is it it's associates a group to each morphism. And so a class in here is, again, a collection of operators. Uh, and now it's indexed by, by g from x prime to x. And you might want to think of it as being indexed by fiber squares. So we build the fiber square. And then CG maps Chow homology of x prime to Chow homology of y prime. And this should be, again, satisfying compatibilities. And this bivariant theory is set up in such a way that it recovers both the operational Chow ring and the Chow homology groups. So the bivariant ring associated to projection to a point is the Chow group. And the bivariant ring associated to the identity is the Chow ring. And what, what Fulton and McPherson explain is that this is an ideal framework for theorems such as grotendieck riemann rock So they build a notion of Grotendieck transformations between bivariant theories. So where you have this pair of a covariant theory and a contravariant theory and that have some structure between them and, and that allows you to build, uh, to explain um, So, so, this, so, so maybe interestingly, this is not the bivariant theory that, that factors into their, to their proof of grotendieck riemann rock So for grotendieck riemann rock they use the bivariant theory of uh, f-perfect complexes. And they transform that from algebraic f-perfect complexes to topological f-perfect complexes to a bivariant singular cohomology. Uh, and that's um, OK. OK, so, so that's the, the story, all of this being more than 30 years old on, on the Chow side. Uh, and now I want to talk about the K-theory side. And again, we're, we're in a situation where K-theory is special. On, on smooth varieties. So if, if x is smooth, then every coherent sheaf has a finite resolution by, by vector bundles, and which gives us a tensor, uh, gives us a product structure on Grotendieck group of coherent sheaves by, by derived tensor. So if x is smooth, then k0 Grotendieck group of vector bundles is isomorphic to the Grotendieck group of perfect complexes, uh, which is. And I'll write k lower 0 for the Grotendieck group of coherent sheaves, or g of x, some people write it. And there's this question that maybe one is not supposed to ask, but, but I, I think it's worth asking. So what is the k-ring of a singular variety? The reason why one shouldn't ask this is that we, there is the Grotendieck group of vector bundles. There is the Grotendieck group of perfect complexes. Uh, and so, so those are, are viable 
answers. And I think sort of having those viable answers is the reason why, why people haven't uh, looked further. Um, but I want to, to mention a few sort of open problems. These are, these are notoriously difficult gadgets to work with on, on singular varieties. So one open problem is, so this was really highlighted by, by Totaro in his paper on the resolution property. So is, is the natural map from Grotendieck group of vector bundles to Grotendieck group of perfect complexes an isomorphism? So, so we don't know. So, uh, so there's one open problem. Here's another open problem. So if x is proper and it's not a point, uh, is z properly contained in? So, so are there are there non-trivial k classes on on proper positive dimensional varieties? So, I think we don't even really know that there are non-trivial vector bundles on on positive dimensional proper varieties. So. Um, Which would, which would put us back in, in this sort of situation, where if we don't have vector, but well, you could then say, well, let's work with perfect complexes. But, OK. So there are all these other options. So there's. You could take left con extension. So take this co-limit over x to y smooth. And this comes with the same caution as before, that x might not have any non-constant maps to smooth varieties. Uh, you could try to build a right con extension. But this comes with the same caution as before, that it's not clear that this is a functor. And so what we've been studying is, is the remaining possibility, which is to, to take the operational theory. So uh, and so. So the idea here is that whatever the k-ring is, it should pull back under arbitrary morphisms, and it should act on Grotendieck groups of coherent sheaves. So C is a collection of operators uh, indexed by maps from y to x. So each of these operators is an endomorphism of the Grotendieck group of coherent sheaves. And it should again be compatible. So this should be on y now? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So this should be compatible with flat pullback, proper push forward. Oh, uh, yeah, lower. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people prefer G, and I've been writing K lower for so long. If I, if I try to switch, I'll, I'll, I'll make a mess. OK, and geese and pullbacks for regular embeddings. And I should say that, so somehow we got into this, um, we got into this from the, from the point of view of equivariant geometry with torus actions and localization. So, so we developed a whole theory uh, torus equivariantly. And 
and so here there's a so the basic idea goes back to Fulton and, and Gillet, and then we, we push this into the torus equivariant setting and, and then transfer it. So this fulton gillet result is a descent theorem for Groton D groups of coherent sheaves. And then when you have theorems about Groton D groups of coherent sheaves, they translate into theorems about uh, operators. And so here the theorem is that if y to x is uh, proper and birational with exceptional locus E and pi of E is S, then the operational K theory of X injects into the operational K theory of Y plus that of S and the image is the kernel of the difference is so this map is exact this sequence is exact so it's more exact with like the Moro theorem? Yes. <coughs> uh, that should be right. And so this sequence is somehow the thing that makes, that allows computations and gives, gives many good properties. So, uh, so, so given resolution of singularities, this is the right con extension of Groton D groups of vector bundles to all varieties. And this is also the CDH sheafification. Of K0 vector bundles and K0 perfect complexes and K0 alpha. <coughs> Right. So do you get the same thing? No. Oh. Right. Okay. So, th so this is a very good question. So, so this. Right. Okay. So, uh, let me do just a couple lines, and I'll come back to that. Uh, so, other properties. So, there's a theorem of Thomason that Groton D groups of coherent sheaves are a one homotopy invariant, and so. And it follows that operational K-theory is, is A1 homotopy invariant. And so then you expect some relation to Weibull's homotopy invariant KH. OK, so uh, now one important thing about, so, so since Grotendi groups of coherent sheaves are A1 homotopy invariant and the K ring is the Groton D group of coherent sheaves on a smooth variety, then we know that, uh, so Weibull's KH agrees with K on smooth varieties. And now that we know that op K is right con extension, there has to be a map from KH to op K. So, so a corollary of this is that there's a natural map from the degree zero part of, of Weibull's homotopy K theory to op K, and this is this is not an isomorphism, so so it uh, it can have a, a very large kernel, um, and the map from perfect complexes from K theory of perfect complexes to K zero also tends to have a large kernel. Uh, so uh, so this descent sequence should be compared to Hazemeyer's. CDH descent sequence for homotopy K theory. And so the way that goes, so you would have, so this is a theorem of Hazemeyer. Uh, okay, so we would have KH0 of X mapping to KH0 of Y plus KH0 of S to KH0 
0 of e. And then here we would have kh1 of e. So higher k theory shows up. You get a long exact sequence. And also, uh, homotopy k theory can be non-zero in negative degrees. So, so this continues in both directions. So, so there's, there's the comparison. And so I guess earlier in the week we've heard about sort of when you have these variations on these theories, they just capture different properties. So, so like Lichtenbaum's etal motivic cohomology just captures slightly different properties than uh, motivic cohomology. And, and this captures slightly different properties from KH and slightly different properties from K vector bundles. Okay, so here are some pleasant properties of up K. So, so up k is part of a bivariant theory. So, so it's exactly analogous. So we have up k for, for morphisms, and up k of x to a point is the Grotendi group of coherent sheaves, and up k of the identity is, is this operational ring. Okay, so maybe I'm doing myself a, a disservice, but okay, so I'm going to tell you that there's one piece that's really missing from this theory. Uh, so, so the piece that we have is if x from x to y is a regular embedding, then there's a natural map. So this is the Grotendi group of F perfect complexes, and this maps to the operational K group from X to Y. So, so we don't know how to construct operators from F perfect complexes when F is not a regular embedding. This is, so, so we have this morphism F, and we have the Grotendi group of F perfect complexes. Oh, yes, yeah, let me not. Okay, never mind. Yeah, S, yeah. SGA6. Uh, okay. So, so the issue is somehow that we know how to pull back f-perfect complexes through Tor-independent fiber squares, but not through arbitrary fiber squares. Okay, but we do have okay. So as I mentioned, op k is a one homotopy invariant. So there's a nice uh, sequence. So. So the forgetful map so from k theory of vector bundles to k theory of coherent sheaves factors so well we have well there's a left con extension which maps to vector bundles which maps to per perfect complexes which maps to homotopy k theory maps to op k. So, so maybe this, this puts this, this k theory in a context that sort of all these k theories are related to each other by a sequence of maps and the operational k theory maybe lives closest to the Grotendi group of coherent sheaves and yet still has, has a ring structure. Uh, so there's a form of Kronecker duality. So this is so this is an analog of Totaro's theorem for Chow. So 
So if x is linear and complete, then this operational k ring is canonically isomorphic to to homomorphisms from the Grotendi group of coherent sheaves to, to Z. So in some sense, uh, right, so this is somehow a very good theory if you're looking to pull out numbers. So if you somehow want to take vector bundles and coherent sheaves and produce numbers out of turn classes and integration and push forward, this is, this is a good, good way to do it. We also have this T equivariantly. So, so if X is T linear, Uh, sorry. Uh, so linear means built inductively out of affine spaces by, by taking closed embeddings, complements, and stratifications. So anything that's stratified by affine spaces, stratified by tori, toric varieties, Schubert varieties. And if you have such a decomposition that's torus equivariant, uh, if, so if x is t linear and complete, then up k of x is up kt, so there's a whole t-equivariant version of everything. So this is homomorphisms from the Grotendi group of t-equivariant coherent sheaves to the representation ring of the torus. And so when I say that, yes, yes, split torus, yeah. Okay, so for toric varieties, we can compute things very explicitly. Uh, so what are we at now? Six. So if x equals x of delta is toric, so for a, for a split torus t. then this operational k-ring is the piecewise exponential functions on the fan. So uh, for x smooth, uh, this is due to Vetsosi and Vistoli and Brion Verne. So maybe this is with some things inverted, and this is with integer coefficients. So this is maybe 2004 or so, and this is 1997. And, and so you might ask, so let me uh, sort of draw a picture so, so you see what I mean by piecewise exponential function. So let's say uh, x is p2. So we could take the tangent bundle, and the tangent bundle acts here by characters x and y, and so the associated Exponential function is the sum e to the x plus e to the y. And here we have e to the x minus y uh, plus e to the minus y. And this should be e to the y minus x plus e to the minus x. And what you'll see is that these, these functions agree on where the cones uh, intersect. And these exponentials of linear functions are independent, so the ring of, of exponential functions on a cone is just the representation ring of the torus. And so these are just representations at the fixed points that are compatible over the fixed curves. So this is GKM localization. So another way of phrasing this would be to say that the the operational K theory of a complete torque variety injects into the K theory of the fixed locus, which is a sum of copies of the representation ring, and the image is the same as the image of the one skeleton. And if you're thinking in terms of Riemann-Roch, this, this should be suggestive. 
So a piecewise, so an exponential function is a limit of polynomials. So this includes into the completion of the ring of piecewise polynomials and this these piecewise polynomials on the fan with integer coefficients, this is the operational <coughs> equivariant chow ring. And so this is from maybe almost from 10 years ago. Yet another way to think about this. So say you took spec of this equivariant k ring. So spec of this equivariant k ring so it's a subring of a direct sum of copies of the representation ring. So you have a bunch of copies of the torus, and they're glued together along subtori in a way that corresponds to the combinatorics of the fan. If you take spec of equivariant Chow cohomology, you have a bunch of copies of the Lie algebra glued together along Lie subalgebras. And now the churn character is giving you this map from piecewise exponentials into the completion of piecewise polynomials. And so that's a pullback of a map in the other direction on the spectra. So you have these copies of Lie algebra glued together along Lie subalgebras, and you exponentiate them onto, um, onto the collection of tori glued together along subtori. And that becomes an isomorphism after completing. So, so that's one version of, of localization in Riemann Rock. Let me say a little more about, about localization. So there's many different versions of, of localization. So there's this goresky kotlitz mcpherson localization. There's a Tiabat localization, which is about integrating and pushing forward to a point. And there's ching shelbred localization. And Richard Gonzalez proved a very beautiful version of ching shelbred localization for this operational K-theory. Basically, what he proved is that it holds in full generality. So there's no, yeah. So this is operational chain Shelburne. So this is a theorem of Richard Gonzalez from last year. He says, let x be a complete T variety. Then the operational equivariant K ring of X injects into the operational equivariant K ring of the fixed locus with image equal to the image sorry, equal to the intersection of the images of op k t of x h for h in t codimension 1. So <coughs> if your class comes from x, well, then it comes from the fixed locus of every subtorus. And this characterizes the image. You only have to check the codimension one subtori. So if you're in a nice case like a, a toric variety, then when you take these codimension one subtori, then all you get are the fixed points and the fixed curves. And then you get the GKM localization. But here there's no assumption at all. So there's no assumption that the fixed locus is finite. There's no assumption that the, that the fixed curves are finite. Is that special or is there an theorem for he, he proved the same theorem in Chow theory. Oh. Yeah, the analogous. Yep. Yeah, so somehow this, these operational theories uh, set up very nicely for, for localization. And, and that's Richard's work. Okay, and so let me uh, conclude by, by sketching for you um, the, the results of our ongoing joint work. So 
So this is joint work with Dave Anderson and Richard Gonzalez. Uh, and so there is a, so a Grotendieck transformation of bivariant theories. So, um, and we have to be a little careful of the order of operations here. But you take operational K theory, you tensor with Q, and then complete. And that's isomorphic to uh, operational Chow. Again, tensored with Q and then completed. Yes, so we complete with respect to the augmentation ideal here and with respect to the grading here. Yeah, so, and, and it's a theory, so it's, right, so it's a, right, so there's several non-obvious parts of this construction. For instance, that you can tensor your homology theory with Q and then take operational theory of that, or you can take your operational theory on the integral homology and then tensor that with Q. And we can prove that they agree given resolution of singularities. So that's part of why I'm assuming resolution of singularities throughout. So this is an operational bivariant Riemann rock. So I, I hope you can see this as, as a sort of satisfying uh, contravariant version of Riemann rock for singular varieties. That on smooth varieties, our Riemann rock relates K theory to cohomology, and they're both contravariant, and they both have ring structure. And on, on singular varieties, the versions of Riemann rock that we've had so far have been covariant. <coughs> so, so they're always uh, ending up in some homology theory. And so, so here we can now, now prove such, such theorems contravariantly. Uh, there's also now a bivariant way of understanding localization. So let me say a word about that. So we consider, yes. Oh, certainly. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. So if there was no torus here, then we should be OK. But, but once you have the torus, then the, then the operational chow is non-zero in, in all degrees, and you, you certainly have to complete. OK, so we can consider the homology theory. which takes a T variety X to to the Groton D group of coherent sheaves on the fixed locus equivariantly and then invert something. So S inverse is the multiplicative system generated by Z and characters. And so then you can, so let's call this F. And so then you have an operational theory associated to this homology theory F, which gives you a new bivariant theory. And so then what we do is we construct a Grotendieck transformation, which takes S inverse op K of X to Y into op F. of x to y. And this gives, so the same way that the bivariant version of riemann rock gives one formula that encapsulates all versions of, of riemann rock this gives us 
simultaneously k-theoretic equivariant multiplicities, a Tiabat localization, so meaning that we can compute equivariant Euler characteristics by summing over fixed points. And And we get uh, a formula that, uh, well, it's sort, of, it, it's sort of what it has to be. But it, it relates the Todd class that appears in Groton Deek Riemann Rock to k theoretic localization, so k theoretic multiplicities, modulo chow theoretic multiplicities. So, so all of these, so yeah. Um, And then once we, we have all of this, then we can do computations in specific examples, and we can say things that don't involve the operational theory. So let me give two examples of, of statements that we can prove that, uh, that do not involve operational theory. So if x is a complete toric threefold, And I should say, so these complete toric threefolds are, are somehow a testing ground for, for a, lot of, a lot of these, um, these theories. So we can take k0 perfect complexes on x, and we can map to HOM k0z. And this is surjective. So this is a quantitative way of, of saying that we have a lot of perfect complexes on all complete toric threefolds. We have enough to get the dual of the Grotendi group of coherent sheaves. And the proof here involves um, comparing the descent sequence for operational k-theory to the descent sequence for homotopy k-theory and using the split surjection from, from K0 perfect to homotopy K theory. So that's a theorem of Cortinius, Hazemeyer, Walker, and Weibel. And <coughs> OK, so, so there's that. And we can also do computations to show that there exist explicit complete toric threefolds. <coughs> such that when we take equivariant k-theory of perfect complexes and map to k-theory of ordinary perfect complexes, this is not surjective. So there are k classes of perfect complexes on complete toric threefolds that are not equivariantizable up to k-theory. And um, maybe I should stop there.